Hi there. Well, I have a really interesting engine to share with you today. And I say interesting because on more than one occasion, this engine has been dubbed the worst engine in the world. And this is the 8.5cc or 5 cubic inches GHQ. And this engine was put into production in 1936 and it was based on an earlier engine uh, called the Luttrell. Now when these engines were first produced in 1936 they may not have been bad engines to be honest. Uh, the, the problem came I think two years later in 1938 when the design or the, the internals were changed to uh, save money and faster production I think and I think that's where the problems possibly lie. In 1938 they changed the piston from being a cast iron piston to a stamped steel piston which I think must have had quite a big impact on the compression or may have had if it wasn't done very well and I think it altered the baffle on the top because it was more difficult to get a good shape with a, a stamped piston. Now they also did this engine in kit form as well so that also possibly created problems with engines that weren't put together properly perhaps I'm not I'm not totally sure but I acquired this engine recently from a friend who said he thought it looked good and it was uh, probably a runner and it was an offer that I couldn't refuse so I jumped at it. I mean, I love the look of these engines because they're really chunky, they're very agricultural and I just thought because of the reputation it would be interesting to see if and how it ran. Now Adrian Duncan has written a really good review and historical look at these engines and if you want to know more have a look in uh, the description below this video and there'll be a link to that article and it is a really really good interesting read so anyway let's take a closer look at this now well here we have a lovely engine and you can see it looks quite chunky and, and as I said agricultural almost on this transfer cover we've got the embossed GHQ New York USA Aero and these I believe were produced in the Bronx in New York now if we turn it over you can see on this side we've got the Venturi and the needle valve and one of the possible problems with these engines was the exhaust here which are four holes pushes out the exhaust fumes and which can be sucked straight back into the Venturi which would undoubtedly if that happens cause some kind of running issues perhaps. Now the question is is this one of the earlier engines from 1936-1938 or is it one of the later engines? Well looking at the piston it's got a cast iron piston with a baffle on the top so it's certainly one of the earlier pistons. When we look at the crankshaft however it's been snipped at the end and apparently the earlier ones were machined and the ones from 1938 onwards were snipped. So the chances are that this is a kind of a bitzer engine made up of, of various different bits. I mean it has great compression which is encouraging but it needs to have not only great compression in the head but also in the crankcase here to get the fuel up into the uh, into the, the combustion chamber and this kind of uh, crankcase affair does lend itself to, to possible leaks. So it all depends how it was put together. I mean it might be this was a an engine from 1938 to the transition when they were moving to a cheaper kind of easier production and the quality was dropping off but it's so it's got one of the older crankshafts but the a, a piston that's uh, like I say cast and lapped and produces good compression like this has. Now these engines were manufactured from 1936 through to the early 1940s or they were still available for quite a few years after that uh, till the late 40s because so much of the, the parts were produced and they were uh, sold as kits. But back in the day when there was no advertising standards the claims were really fanciful for these engines and the performance and the competitions that they'd won. 
But it's interesting, one of the things that they did claim was that they would run equally well clockwise as well as what we're used to with the model engines anti-clockwise. So it'll be really interesting to try that out today uh, when we get it in the test stand. So, I mean, I've got a prop on here now. Got good compression, but there's only one way to find out whether we've got a paperweight or a lovely purring engine. So let's get this in the test stand. Well, I've got this beast of an engine clamped in the test stand and I can't wait to see how it runs. I'm going to be running it, hopefully, on a 13 by 5 wooden Zynga prop. So, let's get this thing fueled up and see if it will run. Right, well this is most definitely a nice cold start. So, we'll see how it runs or starts. There we go. Plenty of choke to start with. I suppose I'd better put my glove on. Plugged in. Woo! Bit of a kick. Let's just retard the ignition a little bit. Take the HT lead a little bit out of the way. So that is just. I have really enjoyed running this today and uh, it took a little bit of flicking to get it started, a little bit of work to get the needle valve and the timing right, but once it was right, once we'd got that dialed in, it ran really sweet and quite steady at about 4,700 RPM. Didn't want to go much above that. It's interesting, it gets quite hot here adjusting the 
timing and the needle valve because the exhaust is coming out there straight onto your fingers. But I really enjoyed this engine and I think we've got a good one here and a keeper. Well, we've had this running counterclockwise, what we're used to with our model engines, but now I'm going to turn the prop round and we'll see if we can get this running clockwise and uh, see if those advertisements are true, see if it really does run, run clockwise. That'll be interesting. I'm turning the prop round just so that it draws a little bit of air over the engine, hopefully. I probably won't run it that way too long because I don't want it to overheat. Well, that ran backwards, but it didn't seem totally happy. And uh, I think I've got the timing in the right place because it did run. And when I altered the timing, you could hear it speeding up and slowing down, but it didn't seem as happy going, I say backwards, going clockwise as when we had it running counterclockwise. So I think we need to get this going again, counterclockwise, just to, uh, just to hear it purr again. Right, I've just replaced the plug and I've put in a, a brand new rimfire plug and I thought it'd be interesting to see how that runs, if at all, differently. Because the champion that I had in it was quite an old, an old plug. So, probably make no difference at all, but we'll see. Well, that ran lovely. Much better going counterclockwise than it was going clockwise. But I am really excited to have got this running today. And it does run absolutely lovely. I mean, we did touch nearly 5,000 RPM at one point, but it's kind of happier sitting at around 4,700. And uh, it doesn't seem that uh, sensitive to the timing but it does seem sensitive to the needle valve. And when you're trying to adjust the timing here, the ignition timing, you're, you've got your fingers right in the exhaust outlet. And so it does get a little bit hot and a little bit oily, but I think we've definitely got a keeper here and a really nice running GHQ. And for an engine with such a, a poor reputation, shall I say, um, it's nice to have one that runs so sweet. So anyway, I have really enjoyed running this and I hope you've enjoyed watching it.